So code development. I use a couple different IDEs. Um, some of my favorites are RStudio, uh, VS Code, and Vim for other things. But typically for when I'm, when I'm writing code, I typically stick with uh, VS Code unless I'm writing R code, in which case I'm in RStudio because why, why not? Now for this Arch system, um, I had to install um, VS Code from the AUR. Now I didn't want just normal VS Code obviously because of all the Microsoft telemetry and other crap in it. So there is something called VS Codium. Now VS Codium has all that Microsoft junk stripped out and all that telemetry gathering information, all that is gone. So it's really just uh, that package and what you really want. Um, so I have that and I downloaded that from the AUR do, 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 VS Codium. I built the package with make package dash SI and then great. So now from the terminal, I can just type VS Code, um, VS Codium, I think. I'm not going to type VS Code because, because um, whatever I had to type before to get um, VS Codium going uh, was obviously too much work and I didn't want to do it. So let's be lazy. Now I'm not opening VS Code all the time over and over and over again. So it's not something that needs to be like super automated or just crazy amount of automation set on it. Um, but what I did do is I wrote a shell script for this. So all it, had, all it does is it opens uh, VS Codium and it will at and disown the process. So the, by running this script, it's going to run the binary, or run the executable, and it's actually gonna start the application. It's going to disown it from the terminal that it open, that opens it. This way, it's not just having a floating terminal that I have to have open after typing out this command. And then um, this is a shameless little bit of copy pasta from Stack Overflow on how to kill the parent process. So I can call this shell script from the terminal and it will kill the terminal I called the script in uh, because I don't have this bound to a key. It doesn't work like in the video I posted about um, whatever application I was calling, Slack. Um, so it doesn't work like in my Slack video because I'm not, I don't have it bound to a, to like a key binding. So this one will just kill the parent, uh, parent process. So let's see what that looks like in action. I can just type VS Code because that's what I know it is. I know that that is my editor. And so whenever I need it, I can just type VS Code, it kills the terminal, and then it will actually open up the application in a hot minute because of all that software it's got to open. Unless it's gonna give me an error because of a recent upgrade. Hmm. It looks like it is gonna give me an error. Hmm. Let's try a couple of things then. VS Codium. Okay, so that's what I need to do. We'll just type that out. So the recent upgrade from um, one of my upgrades, I guess I just didn't test it. So we just automatically, uh, update this shell script. So you can see like currently, um, well, that's weird. Why did it do that? So let me figure this out for a second. So if I called VS Codium, local binary tools, VS Code. Ah, okay, so I was looking for VS Code, binary, Codium. And so if I go to programs and then Package, oh, we were going to, oh, user share. That's right. Um, and let's see, VS Codium binary, binary Codium. So there it is. So why wasn't it not working? Hmm. Strange. 
So this should work. VS Code. Hmm, I'm not sure why that didn't work earlier. Works just fine now. So anyways, I have it bound to that script for VS Code. And it will open up the actual program and close the terminal that called it. That way it's not something just floating out. Um, but one thing I really like about VS Code is the extensions. Um, there's so many possibilities of things you can do. And I have a lot of extensions on this for a bunch of different types of code development. I'll just run through what some of them are. Um, I got Beautify for um, just making prettier, prettier code. Uh, better comments is really awesome for highlighting different types of comments in a code file. Not to mention it gives you this um, uh, little tab here that lets you list out all the comments in a open folder and all the files. So it's great for managing all your to-dos. Um, I got bookmarks. I haven't really gotten a chance to really do a lot of heavy development in VS Code because I haven't had a lot of projects. been busy with work, just got promoted and got more stuff to do. Um, but you can actually add bookmarks with this, and then you can look at all your bookmarks. Um, bracket pair colorizer. This is really useful for seeing uh, different breakdowns in your code, especially for things like JavaScript or C, any C language, um, just to see all the brackets. Code spell checker for weird things that should potentially be spelled right. Uh, CSSP. I got a couple things in here for front-end development, um, HTML, CSS support. I got Git Lens for uh, when it's a Git project. You can see like who made what changes in each file. Um, import cost. This would be if you're downloading packages. Um, I'll let you look at this little preview here. I think this is one is actually really cool. Haven't needed um, to use this at all, but I did think it was really cool. Indent Rainbow because we all want candy in our code editors. Um, I got live SAS compiler to write SAS code. This actually does come in handy. Um, found a use for this at work, actually. Uh, live server for actually doing uh, front end changes so I can actually see the live preview of um, an HTML file as I change it. Uh, check boxes in normal markdown documents um, to display correctly in the preview. Footnotes, same thing. Uh, linting for markdown. Um, Minify for JavaScript code. This way it minifies it and takes all this type of stuff and can just make it a single string. Uh, prettier, again, more code formatting. R, in case I ever write R code in VS Code, I haven't really done that because I just use R Studio. why not? SAS, because when I'm writing SAS code. Um, to do tree, this is this little to do thing right here. Um, the, the one that lets you have the, the whole menu. And then here's the Git Lens one. I didn't really show you that earlier. But, and then I also have the Vim add-in. This thing is awesome. It lets you use Vim key bindings, um, even macros in VS Code, which is cool. Um, I also have Vim mode activated in RStudio. So Vim for everything. Even if you're not gonna be in the Vim editor, Vim key bindings are just amazing. Um, and then VS Code icons, because I like my icons. So yeah, so that's what I use um, in VS Code. Uh, I really do like this as my main editor. Uh, if I'm gonna do code development, I would do it in VS Code because I do enjoy it. Um, that said, I do like using Vim. And so even if I'm not gonna be in Vim for something, I can use Vim key bindings, which is just yes, just yes. And then again, this whole system is based on Vim key bindings and I love it. But for managing file trees, yeah, there's nerd tree in Vim, but yeah, I, I just I just really like VS Code for the graphical nature. Like if I'm doing code, that's one of the, the whole reasons I like doing code is all the different colors of the syntax highlighting and the folder trees and all that stuff. Um, I just like VS Code's interface, no matter how heavy it is. So I don't have this being opened up incessantly all the time. So I just have it bound to VS Code. I type it in the terminal, it works, um, but I don't use it often enough to really take up the real estate of a key binding to call this. But that's what I have for that. So let me know if you have anything different set up or what you use. Um, tell me what your your favorite IDE is or if it is just Vim or Emacs or something. So till next time, peace.